Uh, well, it's been quite a week, hasn't it? Let's start with a prayer. Gracious God, God of love, God of peace, God of justice, pour out your spirit on us gathered here. Open us up, mold us and shape us. Build us into a community that heralds the coming of your kingdom on earth, against all evidence, in the darkest of valleys, even when all seems lost. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's been a big week for fear on most fronts. I'm thinking of the attack in Boston first, of course. What an unexpected and terrible shock. The bomb goes off in the middle of a crowd, and then a second one moments later. People die, others are rushed to the hospital with life-threatening, life-altering injuries. And all of it at what would normally be a happy and inspiring event, the finish line at a marathon. Um, yeah, I, you know, it's like, why don't you attack some grandmas making apple pies next, you know? Anyway, and then what follows on Friday, firefights, a police officer's killed, a lockdown of the entire city of Boston, and a bunch of suburbs for the entire day. For a whole day, millions of people stayed home, holding their collective breath, while outside crowds of police and SWAT teams walk from door to door, searching on earnestly, diligently, for a single man. It was a pretty amazing day for fear, to be totally honest. And in other news, other terrors, a fertilizer plant decades old catches fire and explodes in a tiny town, and 12 are dead at last count. The Senate decides not to support even the most tepid expansion of background checks on gun sales of their own fears for re-election, first off, and secondly, supporting a lobby that, I personally believe, garners its strength from people's fears. In other fear news, news, though, you'll be happy to learn this. Um, I learned this week that gold is sometimes called the fear commodity because people buy it when they're afraid the market will go down. Um, did you know that? Did anyone know that? All right. But the market for gold is down for this week, so that might be a good thing, a good sign for the economy anyway. Um, so at least on that front, fear is down a couple of points. Um, the bad side of that is when it comes to the market, um, the other side of the equation is greed. So... When the fear is down, the greed is up. But anyway, we will get into that. Um, and of course, there are all the fears that all of us live with in our own lives. The undercurrent anxieties about how do I look? What do people think of me? And if, am I raising my children right? Or am I doing the right thing with my job? And then there's the big rocky problems that crop up about important relationships, about health concerns, about money problems, about you name it the fears that are reasonable ones, and the ones that you know aren't worth worrying about, and yet somehow they sneak into your mind and they wreak havoc anyway. I don't have to rehearse it all. You know it, we know it, and God knows it. Which is why it's amazing and beautiful to me that one of the texts in the lectionary this week is Psalm 23. This was already picked out for us ahead of time. It's basically a song of peace in the face of fear. God takes care of me, the writer starts, by making sure I have enough to eat, water to drink, and then I get the rest that I need. God is my caretaker, my shepherd, my mom. You know, because moms do that. When, when they're on their game, they make sure you get enough to eat. They pay attention to your naps, and then later they want you to call them and come for visits so they can take a look at you and make sure you're okay. So first this. God takes care of us day to day. Peace in the face of fear. Fear that there won't be enough, that we, to survive we have to struggle and dodge and, and strive. Jesus had something similar to say. Look at the lilies of the field, he told his disciples. They don't know how to sew, but somehow they wear extravagant, beautiful clothes. Or look at the birds of the air. None of them ever goes to a grocery store or earns a paycheck or plants a garden. And yet God makes sure they're all fed. And next we hear in the psalm, assurance of God's presence and protection in the face of the darkest of valleys, in the face of death. God sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There are things to be afraid of. There are enemies to be faced. And yet, in the face of those things, 
God's presence means peace, means abundance. I fear no evil because you are with me. And then the finally, the promise of an abundant future. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So what do we do when we hear these words? What do we hear? What do we do when we hear, I will live in the house of the Lord my whole life long? What do we do with this hymn of peace coming at the end of a week marked by fear? In some ways it can feel like an attempt to paper over real pain, real fear, real difficulty. And yet the thing is that the psalm is telling us about God, what God is like, as a testimony to his or possibly her experience. It's a reminder and encouragement from a friend who wants to help us find our own peace in the face of fear. Because the thing is that fear has its place. Fear helped the people of Boston work together to help the authorities to find the marathon bombing suspect. Fear helps keep us safe in dangerous situations because it keeps us focused on the source of danger. But when we live in constant fear, we get a kind of tunnel vision, paying attention only to dangers, even to dangers that aren't necessarily so dangerous. And then the danger excludes any other consideration. We have all this fear around jobs, which, and I don't want to discount the pain that goes with being unemployed, but some of the rhetoric flying around in the public sphere that jobs are the most important thing without any other consideration, the jobs spent obliterating the environment or people's health and well-being are somehow acceptable and necessarily necessary simply because they are jobs, well, that is fear talking or greed by some wearing the mask of other people's fears, I suppose. Which brings us around to Earth Day, which is tomorrow, and what Earth Day has to do with fear. For thousands and millions of years, nature was bigger than people, although to be honest, we've had some big impacts on our environment in the distant past, too. Um, For example, we hunted large mammal species to extinction on a couple different continents, or, you know, agriculture. But the wind and the rain and the heat of the southern sun and the cold of the icy northern sea, all these were things were a given, not something that somehow responded to what we as humans were collectively doing. Now, however, we're changing the whole climate by our collective action. And that's something to be afraid of, because big changes are already here, and even bigger ones are coming. And yet the psalm is one of peace, and in fact the peace that comes from recognizing God's presence in nature, surprisingly enough. Because the thing is, that's how God takes care of us most days, with the earth, with the love of a shining sun and clean water and plants that produce food and oxygen using just the sun and water and carbon dioxide. That's all they need. God has a really great system going to keep us fed and sheltered and is working on all of us to build up a society, to build up human cultures marked by love, by trust, and by peace. Not just for us, but for all of creation. So today, God is inviting us in the psalm to put down the paper towel tube that keeps our vision locked in on fear and to open our eyes to the whole world, to the beauty of a creation that provides for us and in the process to see, to appreciate, and to accept our own role as humanity, grown up and tending as gardeners to the whole of creation. God provides for us all the time. Let's let fear drop away, and let's put trust in its place by God's God's grace. So I'd like to close out with a sung version of Psalm 23, written by Bobby McFerrin and dedicated to his mother. And I would invite you to listen and answer God's invitation to let go of fear and to allow trust to take its place. Um, If you want to watch the video, you can. Nothing too interesting happens. It's just some guys singing. But the song is beautiful. So let's listen together.